and welcome to the making of my first Organite pyramid. First of all, I drew a template which I cut to fit inside the mold so I can see roughly where I want my layers to be. However, when I was making it, I ended up not following the lines because I needed more space for the crystals than I thought, but it was a good idea. I also dusted the outside of my mold with baking soda. I didn't have talcum powder, and I read baking soda can be used instead, <coughs> and it actually worked out fine uh, for the demolding. Now, here are some of the materials I plan on using. This is going to be in blues. So I've got glitters. I've got metal nail art pieces three colors of mica powders. I've got clear quartz. I've got turquoise sea glass. I've got aquamarine quartz, wood pieces. I ended up using plain ones instead of colored ones. I just thought it looked nicer. I made a bracelet out of metal and beads as well as wrapping quartz and kyanite in copper. That covers both the, the metal and the crystals component of an organite pyramid. I love the colors in this. I also used the teal uh, aluminum wire to make the bracelet, and I'll be putting some blue flowers in it. I also unrolled one of those decorative jute balls in order to put the jute rope inside the pyramid as well. I might have too much stuff, but we're going to see how it goes. So, here we go. Stir, 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 stir. As you know, when mixing resin, ratios and stirring are a key component. There goes my blue mica powder and some glitter, because you always have to have glitter. When pouring into the tip, be very careful to pour right on center because you don't want a blob of color down the sides where some of your clear resin will end up being. I'm using a small cocktail toothpick just to poke down the edges and down to the tip to make sure it gets in there all the way. Hi, there I am, wearing my full PPE, a respirator, and gloves. This is a must for anyone working with resin. Now, I need to approximate where my crystals are going to hang. And I'm tying it over a wooden spoon because it's something that won't roll and move. And unfortunately, in the resin, my crystals moved anyways, but it was worth a shot. Just making sure I've got it completely on center. There we go. Now I'm going to move it anyways. Okay, I'm going to pour a little bit of clear resin in there first. Get the bubbles out. Then hang my crystals and pour more clear resin. I don't know how my crystals and copper ended up going off center when they were ha hanging perfectly on center this whole time. Now, I've pulled up all these turquoise metal bits in order to put the bracelet over top. Besides a decorative element as well as being metal and crystal as part of the components. Now you see me spreading out these teal wires. That is because I am going to attach the roses to them so they look like they're facing the right way up when you have the mold, um, the pyramid on a table. I'll speed this up since it gets a little repetitive to attach all of them. Here we go. Next time, I think I would place these roses further down. I had them below the bracelet 
and this part of the pyramid really took up a lot of space so that I kind of ran out of space to do other layers further down. But I really liked how the, the roses turned out in the final look. Just twisting all the wires together so the roses will stay in their spot when I pour the resin. Adding a few more just so it looks full. And one more. Fiddling, 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 because, you know, perfectionist. Now I poured some resin over the roses first, just to make sure I wouldn't get any air bubbles trapped in that part. Now this layer of resin doesn't come up to cover the roses, but at least I've started getting that part of the interior covered. You see I'm using, not using a deep casting resin, which is why I did my layers maybe a half an inch at the most and waited at least six to eight hours between layers, sometimes a full day. So making one of these pyramids can easily take up to a week, depending on the layers and the components and how cured I need each layer to be. Now here I'm putting some little crystal chips in, just to add a bit more decoration. Really, with Organite, you can design it however you want, as long as you have the two main components, which are crystals and metal. And then the more organic components you add, like glass and rope and wood, just really amplifies what it's doing. Sorry, I went out of focus here. Don't know why. It's just a clear layer with a little bit of glitter in it. Now I'm adding the sea glass layer. And unfortunately, this pale blue color kind of really gets lost in the clear resin. I think I'll have to stick two stones in glass that have more vibrant colors so that they really stand out in the sculpture. Now I'm also adding clear quartz chips and the jute rope. Jute is made from hemp, which obviously is a natural product. I was trying to get this to lay flat so it wouldn't come out the bottom of the pyramid, but it wasn't working out too well. I'll kind of push it down once the resin's in there. Again, using clear resin because you want to be able to see all the components that are in the pyramid. As always, after each layer, use your heat gun to remove any bubbles. Now I'm just placing the wooden mushrooms or toadstools on each side of the pyramid. I decided the natural wood looked more in tune with the design of this piece than going with something that had been painted already. I'm placing these very carefully on the sides because I don't want them to slide down into the resin. I want them to be right up against the edge of the pyramid so you can really see them bit more resin in there, bit of heat gun, and now we're on day 557. Added a whole bunch of clear quartz to the bottom, poking out the air bubbles, adding beach pebbles on the layer above the clear quartz just to ground everything earth components really amplify the energy of these pyramids. A little bit of iridescent glitter, although it looks pink on here. It ends up picking up the colors of whatever is in there. 
you don't really see the the pink in the final piece okay getting ready for my final layer it's going to be a creamy white base I wanted to do white and then black but I kind of ran out of room this to me looks like icing as I pour it yummy yumma doing all the sides first make sure it's going to cover everything then the center I also pour slowly Again, that gives it more of a chance for the air bubbles to release rather than just dumping it quickly. It's also really crucial when you start this that you make sure your pyramid is on a level surface because when you get to this level, it can really make a difference to your finished base. Heating a bit. Before I put a bit more on, I let it settle for a bit and then added some more because the resin will always shrink and suck into the mold. It's time to demold. Here we go. The sun came out at just the right time to sparkle on this. I was so excited. The bottom turned out really nice and solid. Sometimes whites can be translucent, but I really wanted an opaque finish for the base. Oh, you can see the bracelet and the copper. You can see the color of the roses, not necessarily the detail. I think maybe because they were so far to the center. Next time I'll put them on the edges. But all in all, I am just thrilled with how this first attempt turned out this pyramid is about seven inches tall and is available on my store and here's some shots of it standing on a dresser with the fairy lights behind it it really is stunning if you could put it somewhere where it catches the light every day it just really will amplify those energies and the metals in it suck out negative energies from your space. So it really is a, a two in one piece, amplifying your positive, getting rid of your negative, and it's pretty, super pretty. Can't wait to make my next one, which will be all in pinks. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. <music>